conclusion. In the previous chapters, I generally expounded the essence of generating bodhicitta. In fact, every Mahayana scripture can serve as a textbook on bodhicitta and can elaborate on bodhicitta. Whether it is the Flower Adornment Sutra, Diamond Sutra, Treatise on the Great Perfection of Wisdom, or Foundation for Yoga Practitioners, each of them presents a complete method for generating bodhicitta, representing at different levels of generating bodhicitta. We are fortunate to hear the Buddha's teachings and learn the way to liberate ourselves from samsara and afflictions. This is because we have accumulated merits from countless past lives. Since beginningless time, the attachments to self in person and self in phenomenon have been harming us. If we cannot make a breakthrough in our spiritual practice, the same afflictions will continue to afflict us in the future. This is the fundamental problem we shall resolve through learning the Buddha's teachings. Compared to the elevation of inner life, everything external is fleeting, like a dream, an illusion, a bubble and a shadow. Even a king who rules the entire world can only enjoy a few decades of wealth and prosperity, which cannot help elevate his inner life. In the endless cycle of birth and death, spiritual practice is the only path to liberation. I watched a TV program called Animal World. In the program, the monkey that defeats other monkeys in a fight becomes the monkey king. After some time, when a new male monkey grows up and defeats the old monkey king, the winner becomes the new monkey king. If we don't learn the Buddha's teachings, we are essentially no different from these animals. The most precious quality of humans is our ability to learn the Dharma. Without the Dharma, sometimes humans are not as good as monkeys. Monkeys are carefree and don't need to work. Compared to monkeys, humans create much more negative karma through harming others. From the perspective of the karma humans create throughout their lives, especially in this era, humans are not as good as monkeys. In the endless cycle of birth and death, spiritual practice is the only path to liberation. Only by following the bright path guided by the Buddha can we wake up from the dream of ignorance. Generating bodhicitta is a big challenge for one's ego. It is also an immense difficulty we face on the spiritual journey. However, once we truly generate bodhicitta, we can resolve all afflictions easily. This is because all afflictions arise from the attachments to self in person and self in phenomenon, and bodhicitta is the best weapon to eradicate these two attachments. Usually, in Buddhism, we use different methods to deal with different afflictions. However, the supreme method can deal with all afflictions. As the saying goes, respond to all changes with an unchanging principle. Bodhicitta is this unparalleled method. Once we apply it, we can resolve all problems effortlessly. The core of all Mahayana practices is bodhicitta. They are all based on bodhicitta. I sincerely hope that we can widely spread the great teachings of bodhicitta and sow the seeds of bodhicitta throughout China. However, having enthusiasm alone is not enough. While propagating the teachings on bodhicitta, it's also essential to guide people to cultivate their minds with sublime methods. 
As stated in the Sutra, Bodhisattvas use two practices to strengthen their bodhicitta. What are these two practices? The first is practicing the Bodhisattva path with mindfulness, and the second is practicing meditation to eliminate afflictions. Wisdom and skillful means, like a mother and a father, are both indispensable. The attainment of Buddhahood is the accomplishment of compassion and wisdom. Specifically, it is the attainment of Buddhacitta and the insight of emptiness. If we train a group of genuine practitioners based on these two aspects, Chinese Buddhism will improve significantly. This is what we need to do. Chinese Buddhism needs a significant elevation. Nowadays, there are good Dharma centers all over the country. However, some only focus on precepts, which is not enough. In Mahayana Buddhism, we cultivate the precepts, concentration and wisdom based on Buddhacitta. Without Buddhacitta, even if you take the Buddha's art for vows, you won't receive them. You are just studying at the vows. If you have a lot of afflictions, what is the point of studying precepts? Without Buddhacitta, practicing concentration will be practicing the non-Buddhist or Hinayana path. Without Buddhacitta, you cannot generate the wisdom of emptiness in Mahayana. Therefore, without Buddhacitta, it cannot be called Mahayana Buddhism. Our Chinese Buddhism belongs to the Mahayana Buddhism. To improve it, we need to cultivate a group of practitioners who have truly generated Buddhacitta. Please note that it should be a group of practitioners, not just one or two individuals. I believe that in this way, our Chinese Buddhism will improve significantly. The above is about the conclusion of the book. Next, we will move on to the Q&A section. We will read some questions and answers. <laughs> 